the best things to do in Fukushima Prefecture. I'm Chris, this is Topher. We are the internet's number one human and stuff panda traveling duo, and this video is part of our series on Fukushima Prefecture and Japan as a whole. If you wanna see more videos on Fukushima or Japan, you'll find links in the description below to our whole playlist, but in this video, we're gonna be sharing with you some of the best things to do in Fukushima and some of the hidden gems that maybe not a lot of people know about that you can check out that are slightly off the beaten path as well. In this video, we'll be hitting up things to do mostly in Fukushima. Fukushima's mountain and central region. We're gonna start in a historic village of Oichi Juku. We'll visit one of Fukushima's most iconic castles. We'll head over to the Mount Bandai region, famous for outdoor activities, then over to Fukushima City for strawberry picking and strolling through an onsen town. And we'll end in Koryama City to check out an amazing view at Fukushima's tallest building. And the first place we're gonna talk about is right here. It's Oichi Juku. This town, it's in the Aizu region of Fukushima. So it's in the mountains, as you can tell, it looks pretty snowy and cold here. We're here in February and they just finished their winter festival where they had snow sculptures. But the first thing you want to do when you come to Oichijuku is you want to check out the Viewpoint Observatory. It's on that mountain hill right back there and from there you can get a great view of the town and see the 48 preserved houses that are here. All of them have thatched roofs and they continue to keep them up today just like they were built in the Edo period back in the 1600s. The closest train station to Oichijuku is the Yunakami Onsen train station. We're we're gonna get there in just a second, but first let's stop by the Aishinomaki Onsen train station so you can meet their very special station master. One of the things to do in Fukushima Prefecture is to visit Labuchan. He is the station master of the Aishinomaki Onsen station. And by the way, the whole station is super cute because the station, it's got cats everywhere. But I do wanna point out that if you're coming to visit Labuchan, make sure you're here one of the days he works and he only works from nine to 4 p.m. He's got two days a week that he's off and those two days a week then his chief engineer's working. But when he does work, he's gotta check everything out in the train station. This is where they change the tracks and this cat is the cutest cat ever. You have to come and you have to meet him. Though I will mention, and we're just kind of patrolling with him as he's patrolling the station, I have to mention that uh, they typically don't allow photos and videos. So Labuchan gave me special permission to come down here and film him on the rest of his patrol off the tracks. This is the second generation cat station master. And actually the reason they don't allow photos of it anymore is people took too many flash photos of the previous station master and it actually damaged his eyes. So that's why they have a no photo policy. So Labuchan always takes the same morning patrol and he always comes over here right about lunchtime to eat the cat grass because it's, it's particularly good for his belly. After about a 20 minute patrol, Labuchan's ready to head back in the station. It's probably a little cold out here. And there's another cat that works in the station. His name is Peach. He's the chief engineer. He's resting right now, but he's got a really great hat. That's my color. If you happen to be passing through this train station when the cats aren't working, well, you can still admire the gift shop. They've got lots of really unique items, including Labuchan sake. Another train station that's worth a visit and a linger is the Yunokami Onsen Station. This is the station you would go to if you were taking the bus to Oichijuku. What's really interesting about this station is the thatched roof, and I want to show you inside. Inside the train station, it's just like the old houses in Oichi Juku, but in particular, it's got this fireplace right here that you can sit by and warm up. And the train station staff actually tends to this fire to keep it warm all the time. I've never been in a train station that has a fireplace in it. This is pretty cool. But what's really cool is what's outside. But one of the coolest things about this train station are not the trains, they're pretty cool, but it's the foot bath right here. This is a free foot bath right next to the train station. And uh, we've been walking around the snow all day today. So uh, I think my feet could really use a relaxing plunge in there. By the way, these are size 14 Nike boots in case you're, in case you're wondering. Big feet means big shoes. And, uh, but my feet are sore and could definitely use some rejuvenation here. You know, this place is famous for its hot spring water. So I'm looking forward to, looking forward to doing this, but I gotta, I gotta roll up my, gotta roll up my uh, <coughs> pants there and dip my feet in here. You should do the same when you come because, oh, this is so nice. This is so nice on a, on a cold day, which it is today, feet are sore. And in this water, 
it's not just a like a standard bottom but it's actually got these little stones in it so you can kind of massage your feet on this oh but the water's the water's hot so maybe maybe get in kind of maybe get in kind of slowly because it's hot and uh, if you're here like Monday about noontime like we are you might have the whole place all to yourself by the way, so when I said there were foot baths all over Fukushima Prefecture, I really wasn't lying. Now I'm not at a foot bath in a train station. Now I'm at a foot bath in front of a gyoza restaurant. Terui. We just had some gyoza in here and I noticed there was a foot bath and, and figured I should try it. So I'm really serious when I said there's foot baths all over. And so I'd highly encourage you when you come to Fukushima Prefecture, just kind of just carry a towel with you, particularly if you're around an onsen town, because you never know when you might just see a, see a foot bath and be like, ah. I should use that. If only I had a towel. Visit the most iconic castle in Fukushima Prefecture. It's known by two names, the Aizu Wakamatsu Castle or Tsuraga Jo. That's how they often refer to it locally here. But what's special about this castle? This castle is the only castle in Japan that has red roof tiles. And I know they look kind of dark right now. It's because it's wet and it's snowing. When, if the sun shines on it, they're really red. Why are the tiles red? because they have iron in them and it's much better for the snow. Black tiles, they crack in the snow. And so that's why this castle is red. And by the way, we're here in February and you can see it's snowing. And look, the tiles, they aren't cracked. When local couples visit this castle, they like to look for heart-shaped stones because I think it means their love is gonna last forever. And there you go, and there's a heart-shaped stone. One of the best things to do here is definitely come inside the castle tower. The first few floors you can learn all about the history of the castle. It's been here with a history to the year like 1300. Uh, it's been rebuilt a few times. This castle actually isn't that old currently. Uh, we're going to see a tea house which is one of the original buildings here. But the top floor is why you want to come up to this castle tower because it has a bird's eye view of all of Aizu Wakamatsu city which is a city that's kind of known as the home of the samurai so lots of samurai culture in this city and the other great part about coming up here is you can get up close and personal to the red roof tiles and you can really see that they're red from up here and the first floor of the castle as you enter and exit has a pretty good gift shop lots of merchandise here from the Aizu region but the coolest thing in the gift shop is definitely the special coca-cola Aizu bottle design with the castle right on it so once you're done exploring the castle, make sure to stop by the tea house where you can get some matcha tea and you can get some Japanese desserts. This tea house dates back about 400 years, though it's actually been recently remodeled. It's a small little tea house, but it's cute, it's historic, and the matcha tea, it's not served in like a mug or things like that. Come over here and take a look at this. It's actually, it's actually served in a bowl, right? This green matcha tea, and the sweets right here, they're served with that little, little priest that you're gonna see all over this region. Make sure to stop by here and have this traditional feel. It's really nice on a snowy day. If you're looking to do some shopping or cafe hopping in Aizu Wakamatsu, head to Nanakumachi Street or Nanakumachi Dori. It's right near Nanakumachi Station, which is about four blocks down that way. But there's a lot of quaint buildings here, old buildings, cafes, restaurants, and of course we've got right here a sweet shop. Mm. One of the coolest shops on this street, we were just stumbling around and looking at the shops, is this shop. It's the candle shop, Hoshiban Erosuku. This shop has been here since 1772, selling painted candles. And we've seen a lot of painted candles in this region, but these are some of the most amazing painted candles. They've got small painted candles, and they've also got really big painted candles up here. This shop, the owner of it, is the ninth generation owner of the shop, and his wife paints all of the candles in the shop, 10 to 20 a day. And if you want to paint a candle yourself, well, they've got blank candles right here, and they've got uh, paint and things like that that you can use. You can come in from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., paint a candle for just about 1,800 yen. Pretty fun thing to do. If you like outdoor and nature activities, one of the best places for that is the Mount Bandai region. Mount Bandai, it's a very large dormant volcano, but in 1888, it erupted and created a lot of different lakes. If you're here in the winter, this is a great area for skiing and snowboarding, but there's a lot more things to do and see than just skiing and snowboarding. And today, we're gonna go see some splashing ice at Japan's fourth largest lake, Lake Inawashiro. And the splashing ice is just down this way. 
Now, if you want to come and see the splashing ice, it's about a one kilometer walk from the parking lot. So make sure you bring some good boots. The snow is actually really low this year. Other years, it's a lot thicker, but it's a really neat, beautiful white walk. I'll see you there. So we've made it to the splashing ice. I am walking very, very slowly, like I'm tiptoeing, because this is very slippery right here. But this ice, it's really amazing. I mean, if you come here in the winter, it's a bit of a trek to come here, but it's totally worth it. I've never seen anything like this before. The water splashes up on these plants that are here. And as it splashes on the plants, it freezes. And then more splashes on it and more of it freezes and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's like, it's like a mother nature ice sculpture. You know, I've always seen these things like the ice palaces that people build, but I think this is even cooler because mother nature built this here on this lake. Now the other thing that's here in the winter is swans. Swans migrate to this lake. There's a beach just over that way called Swan Beach. We actually saw a couple of swans as we were driving here. Now if you're not coming here in the winter, what's there to do on this lake in the summer? You can take boats out on the lake, you can go fishing out in the lake, and this hiking trail that we hiked on, it's great for hiking as well. Some of the uh, great hiking in Fukushima Prefecture is here in this Bandai region. This one's pretty good if you like flat land. Obviously there's mountain trails you can take too. I personally like the flatland. Another cool winter activity to do in the Urobandai region is to go snowshoeing. I've got snowshoes on right here that you could have too. By the way, snowshoes right here. Take a look at how deep this snow is, but we're not here to just walk around the snow and you don't have to be either. On Lake Sahara, it freezes. And so you can actually go snowshoeing on a frozen lake. And we're actually on a, like a guided snowshoeing expedition, which is even cooler, it makes me know uh, if I were to go snowshoeing into the wrong place, I wouldn't end up like falling into the lake. Now, the real reason that there are snowshoes are not really to walk on frozen lakes, but they're to walk on this fresh powdery snow. And this snowpack is really quite deep, but if I didn't have these snowshoes on, I would, I would sink in completely. And I think this is pretty cool too, to just walk in this in this fresh powder. It is quite a leg workout, I must say. Walking around here kind of makes me want to lie down and make a snow angel, but I think I would go down about six, six feet and never be heard from again. One of the interesting things about this snow, it's really dry. And so if it gets on your clothes, even if you're not wearing snow clothes, you just wipe it off and it doesn't actually make it wet. Uh, they say to actually make snowmen with this snow, they have to add water to it because otherwise it doesn't compact appropriately to make a snowman. So that's pretty nice. If this was regular snow from California, my pants would be absolutely soaked. We're here yeah. in February uh, and I understand this lake just froze over this year, but yeah. what's the typical season uh, that visitors can do this uh, snowshoeing on the frozen lake? Uh, middle January through early March will be the best season to yeah. enjoy. Uh, snowshoe on the lake. Yeah. yeah, that way you can walk on water yourself. But if people just want to snowshoe around, how long is that season here if they don't want to walk on actual lake? It's uh, end of December through middle of March. Yeah, be. yeah good, very good four months. Yes, yes. Yeah. Very long winter. Yeah. We have. yeah. So, but it's not winter all year. So when this lake isn't frozen, uh, what do people do on this lake? You know, warmer season, uh, people enjoy canoeing, kayaking, on the lake and there's a lot of uh, trails like hiking trails or trekking trails in this area so uh, we introduce how to spend a cool summer yeah in this highland yeah. yeah I think this would be a pretty cool place to stay just speaking of places to stay right in the middle of kind of this uh, awesome natural environment so if you can't make it all the way up into the mountains in Fukushima Prefecture, there's a neat onsen town just 20 minutes outside of Fukushima City, outside of Fukushima Station. Izaka Onsen Town is the name of it. And this town is famous for having nine public baths. This is one of the public baths. Admission to this one is 200 yen. The most expensive is 300 yen. And if you need a towel and soap and a bathing set, that'll cost you 300 yen that you can pick up at many of these baths. This town has been an onsen town for over a thousand years. And and it's famous for the water being very hot. Each one of these public baths has a sign in front of it to tell you a little bit about the particular water in that bath.
So this town, in addition to the public baths, has three free foot baths, and you'll see them on the signs as Ashiyu Teyu, foot bath and hand bath. These are pretty special. We've done a few foot baths across uh, Fukushima Prefecture on this trip, but this one's really quite big. It has a seated bath here that you can sit and enjoy. It also has a standing bath right here that you could stand in. And the water, I want to show you here on this sign, they've got four different sections, and so they actually tell you the water temperature in the four different sections of the bath. A really popular activity in Fukushima Prefecture is fruit picking. Fukushima Prefecture being known as the Kingdom of Fruits is famous for fruits. Apples, peaches, cherries, grapes. Today we are picking strawberries. Uh, many of these farms offer all you can pick and eat specials for about an hour. Uh, in this season that we're here, February, strawberries in season, so this is what we are picking. But when you come, you can take a look at uh, what is in season when you are here. But what's really great about uh, this strawberry picking farm that we're at and these strawberries is because this is in a greenhouse, you actually don't have to wash the things. And actually most of the farms in Fukushima, even if they're not in greenhouses, they'll tell you like the apples, you can just pick and eat them because they generally don't use pesticides that are here. This is a special variety of strawberries called Tochi Otome. And uh, it's really neat to just be able to pick fruit and eat it. You know, I've been to like fruit picking where you just pick fruit and you put it in a basket and you'll take it home and you wash it. But I think it's really special to just pick off the vine and eat like people did in the old days. Mm. And all the fruit we've had here has been in season, has been really delicious. So I'd encourage you in your season to pick up some delicious fruit and get some fruit picking. Most importantly though, fruit eating. Visit the tallest planetarium in the world, located in the Big Eye Building in Koryama, Japan. This is the tallest building in Koryama, Japan, and it's the Guinness Book of World Records certified tallest planetarium. Up here, is a show all about the stars, but what's also really amazing about this place is there's an amazing observatory just outside of it that I wanna go and show you right now. The planetarium's in this dome that you can actually see from the outside of the building from a long, long way away. It's a pretty defining characteristic of the building. So the 22nd floor is part of the space park in this building, and the 22nd floor is free to go in, and it's free to see really quite an amazing view. If you just take a look outside this window, you can see the JR Koryama Station. This is where the Shinkansen comes in, so this building is actually just right outside the exit from the station. Makes it really convenient to stop here on your way north in Japan to Sendai, or or if you're going back to Tokyo at the end of your trip, you can come here and get a really great bird's eye view of the entire Koryama city. So even if you don't wanna to go to the planetarium, definitely come here to check out the view of Koryama city. And there's one more thing I wanna show you that's really neat in the back, particularly if you're a railroad geek. This is a diorama of Koryama throughout the different ages showing you what the town looked like. And it's a scale model train. And the trains in here actually move. Provided you're here on certain days when they're moving, public holidays, and today is a Japanese public holiday. And the train, it even, it goes around and then it stops at the train station. And it's so detailed, it's even got some model smoke coming out of it. If you're a train station geek, you'll love this. This is the diorama of modern day Koryama, and you can see the building right there with the planetarium up on top. It's truly amazing how detailed this diorama is. I don't think I've ever seen as detailed of a diorama as this one. That was the model Shinkansen. This is the real Shinkansen. These trains are amazingly long. If you've never had the opportunity to ride the Shinkansen, the Japanese bullet train, when you are in Fukushima Prefecture, it's a great way to get in and out. And the last thing to do is watch more Yellow Productions videos. I've got a whole bunch more videos on Fukushima, including things to know and things to eat. You can click either of these videos to watch them or find the links in the description below. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video.